everybody, welcome back again. I am extending our hand in hand watercolor week by a few days so that we can talk about a few background building ideas uh, for creating scenes for the different figures that we painted from the hand in hand set. So, all right, so we're gonna start off with the pathway stencil and I'm going to be showing you a few different ways of creating kind of a watercolor look um, to create a pathway using the stencil. Now you could just ink over the stencil and leave it at that if you wanted to, that's perfectly fine. If you want to add, like I said, a, a little bit more of a watercolor look to match the images that we've been watercoloring throughout the past week, I will show you how you can do that. There's a couple of different techniques that I'll show you. So the first one would be just to start off by inking very lightly over the stencil. And I have uh, iced spruce distress oxide ink here. You can use whatever you'd like. I would suggest using kind of a light neutral color. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to just sponge really lightly. And now all that's going to do is act as kind of a guide for us to then watercolor over the top and add a little bit more detail and um, dimension and a watercolor look to this pathway rather than just having the basic inking. So I'm going very lightly here. I'm not adding a lot of color. I just want it, like I said, to be our guide. So I pull away the stencil and this is what I'm left with. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and watercolor over the top of this. So the other option, instead of just inking over the stencil, would be to use the stencil in your die cutting machine to emboss the stone pattern, the pathway pattern. And to do that, you just use an embossing mat and an appropriate sandwich for your machine. You have to maybe experiment with that a little bit. I wouldn't use a sandwich that's too tight or you could uh, risk kind of warping your stencil. So just be a little uh, cautious and a little mindful of how tight your sandwich is. But that's what I did here. I don't know if you can see it very well on the video here, but I ran it through my machine with the embossing mat, and now I have just a raised uh, stone pattern. Now it's really kind of fun after you watercolor that, and I'll be demonstrating that in just a minute here, but after you watercolor that, then you do have that texture on top of it as well. The one drawback to it is it is a little bit uh, more difficult to do. It's uh, than doing, say, the inking that I just demonstrated because it is a little bit harder to see as you're working on it. So it's just up to you. It kind of gets the same effect when you're finished. It's just that the embossed one will have that added texture to it. All right, so this next step of actually watercoloring it is going to be the same whether you're using the embossed uh, method or the inked method. All we're going to do is we're going to use some wet on wet, and I'll kind of show you on both of these here, but it is basically the same. It's just that it's going to probably be hard for you to see on the uh, embossed uh, version on the camera here because there's no uh, it's not real obvious there, but to do this we're just going to use a wet on wet technique and I'm just going to paint with some water over top of each of those inked stones and I'm going to just work on a couple stones at a time so that my water doesn't dry um, and wet on wet again you want it nice and wet but you don't want a bunch of water uh, like a puddle or pool of water and then you can just go ahead and drop in some color I'm going to be using some Payne's Gray and also some, oh, let's see, what do I have here? Burnt Sienna and maybe a bit of Burnt Umber and Van Dyke Brown. Just has some shades of brown. And then I also really like uh, a little bit of that Payne's Gray to just kind of add some cool, um, cool textures to the stones. You can choose whatever colors you want to use on your stones and just kind of play around and uh, can get some kind of cool effects mixing some fun neutral colors. So basically it's just going through and first of all painting each of those stones with just plain water and then dropping in 
those colors. And just let those colors blend on their own on your on your paper surface and let them create some kind of neat uh, color blends. Alright, so then you can just continue on with that same method until you have the whole surface finished. Um, for the embossed method, it's the same thing. You just don't have that little bit of inking the color to kind of guide you. So it can be a little bit harder to see, but basically just go ahead and paint each of those stones again with plain water and then just go ahead and drop your color in for that wet on wet. Okay, so I have finished painting all of the rocks on this embossed version, and now I'm going to wait for it to completely dry, and then when it's completely dry, I'm actually going to go over the whole thing with just a, a wash of a real light gray, just because I don't want the, the grout or the, the space in between the rocks to be so nice and bright and white. So once that's completely dry, I'm going to go over it with just a light wash. So I'll be back in just a minute when that is dry. Okay, so I'm back and that is all dry and now I'm gonna go over it with just a wash of really pale gray, which I'm going to, I think, use some Payne's gray and then just add a tiny bit of burnt sienna to it to kind of uh, take away a little, just a little bit of that blue tint that Payne's gray has. So I'm just kind of going over with a little bit of water, first of all. And then I will kind of drop in my color. And I might go a little bit darker back here in the distance and then work my way this way, lighter, and kind of drop that in along the edges. Okay, so it's looking a little muddy and dark back here, so I'm going to take a paper towel and just pull a little bit of that out and lighten that up just a little bit. Alright, so there's our pathway. It's pretty well finished, except we need to let it dry. And I think I'll wrap up this video here at this point, and I'll come back tomorrow and I will show you how to add some background details and talk a little bit about that.